have you ever wondered what it takes to get God's attention? Have you ever thought maybe he doesn't notice people like you just out here doing normal everyday stuff? Well, I think this is one of my favorite things about the Christmas story because it flies in the face of that lie again and again. Because the Christmas story is made up of completely normal people doing very ordinary things. Let's dive in. What's up, Bible nerds? My name is Caitlin, and I'm so glad that you're here today because we just celebrated Christmas, and I hope everything about your time with family and friends has been a blast and a blessing to you. Today, we are actually gonna look at the Christmas story again, but from another angle. This is kind of like watching your favorite movie over and over again, and like how you notice a different detail that you may not have picked up on before. That is one of my all-time favorite things about the Bible. It never gets old. Yes, I know I'm a Bible nerd, but hopefully so are you. So we're gonna read Luke's account of Jesus's birth today, but I wanna back it up a little bit first for some context. Because we know that in order to read the Bible wisely, we have to remember that Jesus is king and context is everything. So in Luke 1, we read this. Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. Now, this is Zechariah talking, and this is John the Baptist's dad. He's echoing some prophecies about the Messiah from generations before. And what he does is he compares Jesus to the sunrise because he remembers God's promise to bring his light to the whole world through the nation of Israel. And Luke includes this from Zechariah and other details like it in his Christmas story because he wants his readers to know with certainty the things that they had been taught, that the good news about Jesus is completely true. Luke wants us to see through the words that he writes that God is faithful to keep his promises. And he revealed his plan to bring his light into the whole world through the nation of Israel. And that's exactly what he did. But he didn't do it in the way that we might have expected. See, in the first couple of chapters of Luke, where we find the Christmas story, we see angels from God, messengers from heaven, appear to the kind of people that we would never guess or expect. The first was Zechariah, whose words we just read, and he was a slightly cynical old man who worked in the temple. He wasn't a king who worked in a palace. No, God chose to bring the guy who would prepare the way for the king of the world from an old pastor and his wife who were never before able to have kids. The next person that an angel appeared to was Mary, a teenage girl who was getting ready to be married to a guy named Joseph. She wasn't hoping to one day raise the son of God. Chances are she was probably hoping that her acne would clear up before her wedding day. And God picked her. Finally, we watch a whole host of angels appear to some shepherds in the fields at night. Some ragged dudes having a sleepover with sheep are the first to hear that Jesus, the savior king of the world, has been born. And they're even told where they can find him. They're given permission to be some of the first humans to lay eyes on God in human form. Because the purpose of Luke's Christmas story is for us to look at Jesus up close, intimately, and personally in all of the messy and mundane moments and decide if, if we will take him seriously. And that's exactly what those shepherds do in this story. This is Luke 2, starting in verse 8. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. 
But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So the announcement of the birth of the savior of the world doesn't come to a king or a ruler. It doesn't come in the middle of a day in a crowded city square. It comes to a few scraggly shepherds living out in the fields, isolated and at night. Why? Why does that detail matter? Well, what we know from the Christmas story according to Matthew is that King Herod was going to great lengths to discover where Jesus the Messiah would be born. Yet God chooses to send a divine invitation to the birth of his son to some shepherds who were simply minding their own business. And man, this comes right up against my false belief that finding love will only come from achieving something great. What this story shows me is that it doesn't take a spectacular performance to get God's attention. His favor is already on us. It's already on me. Because from the beginning of the biblical story, God has been picking the people that we least expect to carry out his redemption plan. I want you to think about this with me. Paul, in one of his letters, challenges believers to remember what it was like when we were called by God, when we were invited to follow him and become part of his family. What was that moment like for you? Were you kind of like these shepherds, feeling isolated and in the dark? Maybe you were stuck in a pattern of sin, or maybe you felt like an outcast at school, or maybe you grew up in church like I did and were trying to do all the right things, but you found yourself disappointed because you kept falling short. Maybe you actually feel that way right now. What I need you to know is there is good news that causes great joy because Jesus came for you. Yes, you, the one that I'm talking to who feels isolated and alone, the one that feels like your life is a mess, the one who feels like you'll never be good enough to get picked for anything. I need you to know that like these unsuspecting shepherds, you have been picked for the best thing ever, to be a recipient of the favor of God and the good news about Jesus. Did you hear the angels' song? When they appeared in the heavens, they sang peace to those on whom God's favor rests. What is favor? Favor is a special liking for someone or something. It's kindness beyond what is normal or expected. Hear this, God likes you. Like he's especially fond of you. His above and beyond kindness rests on you. It's like that one friend that you have that is just so ridiculously nice to you all the time. Like they bring you your favorite Dutch bros drink just because. Or they show up to family gatherings to support you because they know that it's hard. Or they save you a seat next to them everywhere y'all go together because they just like being around you. Take that, multiply it by like infinity, and you'll have a rough estimate of how much God likes you. And at Jesus' birth, His arrival on the pages of history is the ultimate proof of God's favor on us because God was willing to become one of us so that we could become one with him. He wanted a relationship with you so badly that he entered earth as a human baby and was laid in a feeding trough for animals. Jesus went through puberty and being a teenager. He learned and worked 
and ate and slept. He lost people that he loved. He dealt with family drama. He felt rejection and betrayal. In fact, he got stabbed in the back by one of his best friends. People told lies about him, and ultimately they beat him and killed him. Jesus faced every kind of evil and darkness imaginable. And after all of that, he rose from the grave. Why? Why on earth would a God who by no means had to stand for any of that choose to go through all of it? It was so he could relate to you, so he could have a relationship with you, so he could teach you how to walk through all of these hard things, and so you would never have to face any of it alone. So what is Luke getting at in his Christmas story? He's making it abundantly clear that a God like that is worth knowing personally and following completely. He's telling us that God didn't come for the elite or to live some transcendent life disconnected from the messy and hard parts. In fact, Jesus himself says that he came to seek and save the lost. He came to announce the kind of kingdom where the least actually become the most and the lost find a home. So if you don't know Jesus yet, I would encourage you to do exactly what the shepherds did in this story and investigate. Keep looking at Jesus. Keep reading Luke's account and benefit from his research into Jesus's life. See what Jesus said and did and how he lived and then decide if you wanna trust him. I truly believe that you will not be disappointed. And if you do know about Jesus, Maybe it's time to go all in, because a God like that is worth following fully. So what would it look like to go all in? Well, I'm really glad you asked, because we are about to start a new series on Bible Nerds about how to more faithfully follow Jesus in those everyday mundane moments of life. So be back here next week, and until then, stay nerdy.